This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Rexel Gilbert. Coming up, students from across the state of Florida are headed to Pensacola to participate in the Skills USA Florida and Worlds of Possibilities Career Expo. We'll talk about that. Dr. Ed Meadows joins us in the studio to talk about cultural opportunities for students at PSC. And we're going to take you to a lumberjack festival. We'll show you how they did it way back when. You know, there's always something exciting going on in the various campuses of Pensacola State College, but what this college is and what this college does reaches beyond the campus and into the community and affects many, many lives, even beyond this city. One of the ways that PSC does that is through hosting the Florida Skills USA State Competition and Worlds of Possibilities Expo. And joining us here today is Tyler Kircher, who is the State Director for Skills USA Florida, and also Jennifer Ponson, who is the Coordinator of Student program outreach for PSC and also this event chair. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, let's just start with the basics in the beginning. And Tyler, could you tell us please, what is Skills USA Florida? Sure. Well, Skills USA is quite a unique organization. At our core, we are a student organization comprised of high schoolers and collegiate technical school and state college students nationwide. About 350,000 members uh, across our nation. Uh, here in Florida, we have about 10,000 students, you know, ranging all the way from Pensacola down to Key West. So we, we span quite a distance. Uh, our students are working to develop professionally uh, in areas such as vocational and technical education. Uh, so we have students uh, in welding, carpentry, cosmetology, culinary arts, uh, computers, uh, health professions, you name it. Uh, they're a part of Skills USA. Uh, we offer an award-winning professional development curriculum that is intended to complement what they're doing in the classroom. Okay, can you tell us more about um, the competition aspect of it that's coming up and how the college sure. uh, relates to that? Well, uh, we offer a state conference every year in association with our program of work, and it's an opportunity for the students uh, throughout the state to showcase their skills against other students. So it is a, quite an, an interesting uh, competitive atmosphere. Uh, students qualify from regional events and only the best of the best will make it to uh, Pensacola to compete in the state conference. I was there last year and it's really exciting to watch these students go head to head against each other in these career fields that, it, and as they're doing it, it gives them a sense of the competition they will face in the real world as well. Absolutely, and that is what's so uh, unique about Skills USA. We bring in business and industry partners to judge these contests, so it is uh, quite a mesh between our educators, our students, and industry all working together to ensure we have a skilled workforce. Okay, now Jennifer, the other component of this event that's coming up is the Worlds of Possibilities Expo. Talk to me about what that is and what's new about it this year. Well, the Worlds of Possibilities Career Expo allows our middle school and high school students from Escambia and Santa Rosa County um, to have a hands-on look or interactive exhibits, if you will, with these business and industry partners to learn what it's like to work in the fields. So if uh, Gulf Power has uh, their energy uh, workers there that uh, work with the students, the city of Pensacola may have the lines out for the students to learn what you would do as a line worker for uh, the city of Pensacola for energy. Uh, we have so many different uh, activities. I know Redken is uh, coming in with different mannequins for students that are actually coming in from New York uh, to have mannequins there for them to learn how to work with hair, uh, with nails, and so it, it makes it really exciting. It does, and there's a lot of atmosphere and, and energy that's going on whenever this is all taking place. Will you continue to host the job fair this year? We will. Uh, the Career Source Escarosa will be the host for the job fair, and it will be at the Pensacola Bay Center on Monday. Um, afternoon. It will be from about 2 to 5 o'clock. And uh, last year it was one of the largest uh, affairs that we have had, job fairs, in our area. And we uh, plan to have around 50 vendors there again this year. 
Okay. So. so obviously the impact for the students who participate is is there and it's great. Tyler, what about the economic impact to this community for this particular this state competition? Well, it, it certainly is a great economic impact for our area. Uh, we've had estimates of roughly three and a half million dollars annually um, of, uh, of support from these students coming from out of town to uh, stay in our hotels, eat at our restaurants, uh, it basically engage in all parts of life here in Pensacola for their, their three days. So uh, it is a great opportunity for our community to have such a large conference. Um, we've been told this is the largest conference of its kind that's ever been to the city of Pensacola. So it is quite uh, an amazing opportunity and we've been lucky to have it uh, the past three years. And Jennifer, it engages not just those who are here to participate in the conference, but also the business community. What are some of the businesses that participate in this? Uh, one of our uh, big contributors is Gulf Power. Uh, they have an incredible world of energy that they work for. Uh, we have our uh, construction, world of construction, where our Home Builders Association comes in. They have all different types of, types of activities for the students. Um, with, so they bring in different businesses that connect with them through their Home Builders Association. And they do all different types of activities. Uh, Ports of Pensacola and the Port Users Association come in to do our global uh, distribution and they have activities for the students mapping and and uh, setting up different types of uh, areas within their world. We have our world of public service where individuals will come in from uh, our Scambia County EMS, we have lifeguard ambulance service that comes out, the sheriff's office brings all different types of uh, the robot, they have the SWAT team that comes out. They were even talking about propelling from the building, so uh, wow. <laughs> in the world of safety, if you can imagine. So. Well, last year when I was there, I, I was talking to some of the students, the middle school students who were coming through, and one of the students, I said, what, what are you getting out of the worlds of possibilities? And he looked at me and he said, the worlds of possibilities is teaching me that I can be anything I want to be. And I thought, wow. That's wonderful. Yeah, so well, this that's is touching the lives. Yeah. Most definitely. It's so true because right now uh, we're faced with a huge problem and if we don't fill the shortage of skilled workers in the future, uh, we're really going to, we're going to understand the, the problems then, but uh, essentially now the, the average age of the skilled worker is over 55 years old. And you can imagine the problems that we'll face in 10 years if you know, your air conditioning goes out in the, the heat of August in Pensacola, Florida, or if your, your plumbing goes out and it's going to take them two or three weeks to come fix it. We feel like this is really a great opportunity for us to showcase these careers to the youth because if we don't draw attention to them now, uh, all of us are going to suffer in the future. Absolutely. So the uh, Skills USA Florida State Competition and Worlds of Possibilities Career Expo, Pensacola Base Center, April 28th and 29th of this year. It's going to be a great event. It really Absolutely. is. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you. And when we come back, Dr. Ed Meadows will join us in the studio for a conversation. Right now, a look ahead at some of the events that are headed to Pensacola State College. Welcome back. Pensacola State College President Dr. Ed Meadows is in the studio with us now. And Dr. Meadows, over the months we've talked about all of the different programs and educational opportunities, faculty that Pensacola State College has to offer the students. It's probably an appropriate time to talk about those students today and their accomplishments and what they're doing here at the college. Exactly, Drexel. You know, we're always very, very happy to showcase our students. and. We had a lot of bragging rights in terms of the accomplishments of our students. Our, our, uh, our students that won 41 out of 50 Addy Awards uh, in marketing and photography, uh, 10 of those uh, students won um, at the regional competition and will go to nationals for the Addy Awards there. And um, while we talk about student success, you know, Pensacola State each year ranks uh, the highest in the state on academic achievement for athletic programs. So not only are our students successful uh, on the athletic field or court, right. 
uh, as is the case with our men's basketball team this year winning the Panhandle Conference, uh, but also uh, they are winners in the classroom, and that's because of a lot of hard work and effort on their part as well as our faculty and staff uh, that work with our students. Um, and, and we also like to uh, certainly compliment the quality of our coaching staff. For example, Pete Penna being named uh, the Panhandle Coach of the Year. Kudos to him. And uh, Brenda Penna, uh, Penna being uh, in the headlights, uh, uh, headlines <laughs> for uh, so many weeks, uh, winning 18 straight softball games. And they do this uh, with scholar athletes. So we're very proud of them. Um, when, we, when we talk about the quality added uh, and the cultural uh, enrichment that the college provides the community, we can't forget the uh, Anna Society who uh, brings us uh, through fa our foundation, our Pensacola State Visiting Artist Series. And, and this year we're going to have Steve McCurry and he is a uh, world-renowned photographer, uh, has been featured in National Geographic, even on the cover. He will be here uh, in the visual arts department uh, this spring, and he will actually be appearing at the Sanger uh, later this year in April, uh, where he will give a lecture and uh, show some of the uh, better-known pieces of his art there. Uh, and, and, and while we talk about showcasing uh, students, uh, you know, our, our performing arts, uh, we have 11 different performing arts groups and uh, uh, we're very busy uh, showcasing our students. For example, our, uh, our brass uh, band uh, will be playing uh, April the 11th and then our jazz ensemble the day before on April the 10th. Uh, the uh, guitar orchestra, will be April the 12th, and our wind ensemble will be April the 24th. Uh, and this is great talent. I've, I've been to these performances, and this is great talent. It is, and, and of course, we have the opportunity to, in some of the uh, performance groups, uh, like the Pensacola uh, Symphony and, and the uh, Community uh, Civic Band, to intermingle with talent from the community as well as our student and faculty talent. So it's, uh, I think it's one of the finer points of, uh, of Pensacola State to be able to be a part of the community and to share the talent of its students and its faculty and staff with the community. So uh, though the, the, uh, the cultural aspect of enriching the lives of the citizens of Pensacola while also giving a rich experience to students is, uh, is one that Pensacola State historically has been very proud of. And I think sometimes uh, there are elements of the community maybe that, that seem to forget the fact that the education is not just about what you learn in the classroom, but it's so much broader than that. And that's where one of the areas that Pensacola State College just excels in. We do, and uh, you know, service learning is a very uh, uh, important part of what we do at Pensacola State where through our student organizations and our athletic programs, uh, we actually have our students uh, participating in, in community uh, initiatives. Uh, for example, uh, having food uh, bank drives for MANA uh, Food Bank or volunteering with the uh, uh, Heart Association or volunteering with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, so uh, it gives uh, it gives our students a sense of responsibility in the community, and I think that's very important once they leave and go into their chosen profession that they stay engaged in the community to make our community a better place for, for all of us to live. Of course, we're um, in the top 1% in college affordability across the nation, so it's a good buy. Uh, we have five locations, so we have access for students that may be place-bound or time-bound. Uh, we have uh, a plethora of programs that put people to work. We have an entire campus that is a medical uh, health science campus uh, to employ people in um, this hub, this medical hub of the state. Uh, we have another campus that uh, focuses on um, environmental uh, careers such as turf grass management, forestry, and conservation. That's at Milton. Mm -hmm. And of course, Warrington being the medical campus. And of course, we have the Pensacola campus where we have um, a lot of our vocational and technical programs 
uh, that uh, deal with some of the more traditional disciplines like welding and uh, carpentry, uh, as well as the university transfer students. The bulk of our university transfer students seeking the AA degree come to our Pensacola campus. And I can't forget the Century Center, by the way, that has two new tractor-trailer rigs, uh, one with virtual welding equipment and the other with real-life hands-on welding equipment where we'll be training those workers for the, uh, uh, the Airbus industry in Mobile uh, with a, an agreement with Airbus that they are actually going to transport uh, qualified workers from the Flomaton uh, Century area down to Airbus to work. And uh, those welding trailers were uh, the result of a collaborative uh, across the state uh, line with some of the Alabama community colleges and some of the Panhandle colleges to uh, create uh, this mobile training unit to, uh, to train welders for a very high wage paying type job. Some of these welders can make $100,000 a year. So, the college is not only a, a great buy with a great education, lots of fun opportunities and cultural opportunities, it sounds like it's just a priceless experience then. We hope that uh, is the case for 100% of our students. Okay, on a side note, you mentioned the forestry uh, program at the Milton campus uh, recently. The Lumberjack Festival was, was there, and, and might I say, Dr. Meadows, that you would make a mighty fierce lumberjack if you ever decided to uh, pursue something like that. And uh, we're going to actually have some video clips a little bit later of uh, Dr. Meadows participating in that festival. And did you have fun? Oh, I had a great time, and I love seeing you try to throw the, uh, the hacks and the, and the, uh, the knife at the targets. Um, uh, did you hear what he said? Try to, yes, that, that's the operative phrase there. Well, we all try to, <laughs> but uh, I had a lot of fun and I kidded uh, them that they're gonna have to have a senior category for the older guys participating with the younger guys on the uh, uh, pupwood toss. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us again in the studio today. We always look forward to your visit. Thank you, Drexel. Okay. It was, it was nice being here. And when we come back, you will actually see Dr. Meadows and Yours truly, trying our hand at the Lumberjack Festival in Milton at the Milton campus. But for now, we'll take a look ahead at some of the events that are headed to Pensacola State College. Sawing logs, hauling logs, tossing logs, rolling logs. It's all in a day's work for a lumberjack, as we recently found out on the Milton campus of Pensacola State College at the Lumberjack Festival. Lumberjack festivals sort of center around all of the um, the physical events that lumberjacks did way back in the old days. When you were in a, in a logging camp, you worked way out in the woods, and these guys were very bored, and they were very macho, and they would always brag about who is best at what. So they would challenge each other to throw the axe. Come on, let's go! Come on, pull, 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 pull! Who can cut through this wood fastest, who can climb this pole the fastest, and that's really how it started. And once you do it, it is, it's just addictive. And, and I've seen a lot of these people that started out as kids and they've just grown up through this. I remember the first few of them that I attended, there were probably a few hundred people maybe. And the last few, there have been quite a few. I mean, we can't, can't even get everybody on the list to be able to participate because we have so many people that want to uh, compete. He's a red tail. The Lumberjack Festivals, it's an annual event and it promotes our uh, partnership with the University of Florida. Uh, you know, the, uh, the hatchet throwing, the axe throwing, and uh, the wildlife that they bring on campus. It gets people on campus and, and gets people interested in natural resources and conservation. So uh, we're happy to be able to do that here each year. There are not a lot of places anymore that you can go and just, you know, touch the knives and throw at things openly. This morning we had a, a group come of about um, 11 students and we taught them to compass and pace. And they've never used a compass in their whole life. It's connecting the tradition because we're in a place where this was heavily wooded with the longleaf yellow pine and 
during those years, the men that were logging here, they had time on their hands. So when they had time on their hands, they came up with things to do to show who was the better at these things that were needed for their work, but also for fun. And so we're just living that legacy here. And this is compass and pacing right here. And we have compasses and we have a course that we go around and you have to, you have to pace off. You have to know how many steps you per, per pace for each individual. And you go around the course and the person that gets it closest to the mark at the end of the trail wins. I'm the judge of the compass and pacing competition here at the Forestry Conclave. And uh, the, the contest is orienteering, basically uh, people compete estimating their distance and uh, direction using a compass. In the days of uh, GPS now, people don't compass and pace too much anymore, so it kind of brings them back to the, to the, the roots, I guess, and kind of teaches them the old way of doing things. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch the competitions. It's a lot of fun to um, compete as well, um, which I've only been able to do a little bit. But, and it's just fun for the whole family to come out, and they've got stuff for kids and all kinds of booths with all kinds of informational stuff. And, it's just, it's a fun activity. It helps you remember how it was and, and also just lets you, we, we get so um, distracted with all of the technology that we have now that we don't actually learn how to use stuff and this kind of shows you how it works and that's neat, neat to see and, and to have a competition where it's actually physical stuff and we're getting out and getting some exercise and, and having fun doing it. We have the, the men's, the women's, and the Jack and Jill cross-cut competition, and they have a, a cross-cut saw with one guy on each end. And uh, th that's time, too, and it starts when the saw hits the, hits the wood, and it ends when the wood hits the ground. We're going to do a pulp wood toss where they get a piece of pulp wood that's five and a half feet long, about four and a half to five inches in diameter, and see how far they can throw it. What was it like throwing that big old piece of wood? A lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I thought I would just throw it out there about 30 feet. And I didn't even get half of that. And why did you decide to participate? I just said, well, why not? You know, uh, you might as well um, try to see um, what you can do. You, you know, and I've never done this before. I've always just come and watched. And I wouldn't dare throw the axe, you know, but uh, a piece of uh, pup wood, you know, why not? Ooh. We have a log roll contest. We have a 11 foot long log that's 18 inches in diameter and they have to roll it inside of a course 50 feet and then once they get to the other side they have to turn around and they have to roll it 50 feet back staying on the inside of the course. Come on, come on. There you go, there you go. Okay. Okay. Quick, quick, quick. We throw knives and axes. Uh, we have a target set up. The, if you hit the bullseye, it's three points. If you hit the blue part, which is the nine inch ring, it's two points. And then the white ring on the outside is one point. And then we have an axe throw where you, you the same distance away from the target and we throw axes at the targets. Lumberjacks really did this. It was probably just for fun. At the end of the day, a bunch of guys standing around saying, I bet you you can't stick your axe in that tree over there. And they ended up putting a target on there and, and they started throwing axes and knives at the targets. And it's been part of the forestry conclave competition ever since. You know, you just clasp your fingers over it gently without really holding too much pressure on the blade. Okay. 
and then you'll hold that in the center, keeping it firm, like uh, almost like you're um, almost like you're pinching a um, like a clothesline okay. uh, clamp. And then you'll just gauge for your distance, throw it whenever you feel this release about eye level. Let your hand go, and it flies. Oh, that was close though. That was real close. I'll show you. I'll show you. That's what I do. Pretty much it. We teach children to climb trees because we teach them the safe way to climb a tree. Everybody wants to climb a tree. That's, that's great fun to get up in those trees. But you don't want your kids to do it in an unsafe manner. So when they learn a little bit about recreational tree climbing, we can access that canopy up there in a really safe manner, safe for the trees and safe for the kids. It's just an important event because of the whole atmosphere. It, it lets people know that this area was built around the logging and timber industry, so they learn a lot of history. And it kind of gets kids out of the house, away from their video games, and, and gets them to where they can enjoy some of this outdoor activity that we have. And I can assure you the only knives I will be handling from here on out are the ones that will be on my place setting at the dinner table. We'll be right back. For 33 years, dancers from across the region have been converging on Pensacola State College every summer to participate in an exciting summer dance workshop. They're coming back this year. Here's a preview. When you bring a kid up to the front of the classroom, we'll work on a step with them, we'll work with them one to one. They're getting, they're breaking out of their shell. They're becoming a little bit more comfortable being themselves in front of other people. Stop. Okay. With tap dancing and with any talent or sport or any kind of thing like that, levels vary. But it doesn't necessarily always have to do with age. It has to do with ability. It has to do with, um, do you do any other sports? Do you do any other, any, do you do gymnastics? Do you have other training outside of just your dance classes that make you a more well-rounded uh, athlete? Five, six, well, when you when you're when you're dancing any kind of uh, style of dance or doing any kind of activity, if you start young, of course you have an advantage. However, it, it's really true; it's never too late to start. I've seen people who started tapping when they were 13, 14, 15. They didn't start as a, you know when they were really young, and they still wound up being professionals. So it depends on your passion, depends on your dedication and it depends on how much you're willing to put into it. Like anything else, the more you put in, the more you get out. Looks like a lot of fun. Tap is only one style of dance that will be offered. Classes will also be offered in ballet, modern, hip hop, jazz, contemporary, you name it. For now though, it's time for us to dance right on out of here because that's the conclusion of today's Pensacola State Today program. I'm your host, Rexel Gilbert. So glad that you've joined us. We'll see you next time.